have the privilege of uh, introducing uh, Dr. Nor Chasm, who uh, is going to talk about uh, the dangers of a, a medical device uh, that's used during surgery to uh, cut up the uh, uterus called a morselization uh, in order to uh, remove the uterus without having a large procedure. However, in the process, in, in certain women, if they have an occult cancer uh, in their uterus, uh, they can seed the cancer and, and get severely uh, sick and even die from this. Uh, so at, at this time, I'd like to turn the program uh, over to Dr. Nor Norchasm. Thanks very much, Kevin, and uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Uman Norchasm. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon and general surgeon, um, currently up in Boston. Um, and uh, you know, I'm not sure uh, how many of you have heard um, our story, uh, but basically the whole um, archive um, of the events surrounding my wife's care um, is listed uh, as attachments uh, as, uh, to, from the Wall Street Journal in particular and, and also the New York Times and several other news outlets. Um, the, the hazard um, that we unfortunately fell to is um, a standard of care uh, in gynecological, in minimally invasive gynecological surgery known as uh, morselation. Uh, a very specific set of devices has evolved uh, around this practice. Uh, they're known as, as morselators. They're classified as type 2 devices and they are um, FDA approved under the 510K process for device approval. Um, now, uh, what I've discussed with Kevin is the way we're going to structure this is I'm going to give you a basic introduction to what's happened to us and uh, then I'm going to turn it over to my wife who, who actually just returned from work and uh, you know she'll, she'll give you her uh, personal uh, view of uh, what happened to her as well as uh, you know what, what her perspectives are on it. Um, I personally uh, would like to focus on uh, the anatomy of this uh, particular hazard and just to just to put it in a nutshell for, for you in terms of what this is, um, somewhere close to 600,000 uh, hysterectomies per year are being performed in the United States alone, uh, far more globally, of course. Um, and over the past uh, 10 to 20 years, uh, the advent of minimally invasive uh, surgery um, has put a lot of both um, um, uh, financial as well as prestige pressure on many medical centers across the world to engage in minimally invasive and robotic surgery. Now, um, the uh, minimally invasive gynecologists, uh, in order to get very enlarged uh, pieces of tissue uh, out of uh, a woman's body through small incisions, uh, have started to rely on a technique called morselation. And basically, it's, it is what it, what it sounds like. It's essentially taking a an enlarged tissue and mincing it up. You can morselate things with uh, tissues with, with uh, scalpel. You can uh, morselate things with a fork and a knife if you wish to. Uh, but, but the gynecologists, uh, for the most part, have evolved into a space where they use very specialized devices called morselators to mince up tissues, uh, enlarge tissues, inside a woman's uh, abdominal cavity for the express purpose of getting uh, the tissues um, out of um, the uh, small incisions. Now, in the process, the uh, unfortunate fact is that, that many cancers are uh, either occult because uh, either no diagnostic attempt is made to, to look for them, or there's really no good way to look for them currently. And these are primarily sarcomas. Um, and, uh, and there are also missed uh, cancers, such as endometrial cancers and ovarian cancers, that that for a variety of different reasons are not diagnosed prior to the operation. And in those cases, when the morselators are used and morselation is performed, um, these women end up developing uh, local regionally disseminated uh, cancers, which we know as either sarcomatosis in the case of sarcoma or carcinomatosis in the case of car carcinoma. And this is, uh, this is basically advanced stage um, and uh, uh, stage four cancer as, as, as uh, oncologists uh, know it. It uh, very dramatically changes the prognosis of the women who are affected uh, and shortens lifespans uh, quite dramatically. Uh, recently, uh, Dr. Suzanne George of Dana-Farber published 
uh, her retrospective study. I think it's probably the most comprehensive one, and that's also attached here. It's one of the uploaded files labeled Morselation George PDF. Um, yeah, you will see that the lifespan of patients who undergo this kind of procedure is dramatically reduced, not to mention that the, um, the care of these women is extremely challenging because uh, as the tumors grow on the, on the uh, uh, peritoneal surfaces, on bowel, um, uh, bowel obstructions are caused. Uh, uh, many of these patients have their tumors eroding through wounds. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a very, very uh, difficult uh, patient management problem uh, for people who experience it. Uh, and it, uh, you know, is, is something that uh, from, from the perspective of most general surgeons and thoracic surgeons is really an error in practice. So uh, this collage uh, picture that you're seeing, uh, it's on the left side of my screen. It's uh, 30 of the women who've been affected by this. These are all women who have leiomyosarcoma and who have, whose leiomyosarcomas have been morselated. Uh, each one of these women has given us permission to make this collage um, for the purposes of display at the FDA. The women with the ribbons uh, attached to their names um, are, are no longer with us. Um, one of these women, their family members, did not want their name to be known, but they wanted to participate. So, um, so there's no name on one of the pictures. But, but all the rest um, are either women who are fighting um, uh, leiomyosarcoma, uh, local regionally disseminated, um, and, uh, or, or are deceased, unfortunately. I see a question here from uh, Ms. Shinazi. Uh, Hope I'm not, I'm not mispronouncing it. Why is morselation used instead of vaginal hysterectomy? Well, you know, vaginal hysterectomy. Uh, I'm not a gynecologist. I'll, I'll qualify uh, my, my statements by saying that. But, but I am a general and thoracic surgeon. Um, the uh, vaginal hysterectomies um, are a lot more technically demanding and, in fact, more time-consuming. Uh, uh, there, it's not a trivial operation to do a, a safe uh, vaginal hysterectomy. And in fact, uh, many gynecologists, many of the old school gynecologists feel that this is a, a dying art. Um, and so uh, the act of morselating essentially, for lack of a better analogy, is to, you know, put, putting a, a uh, uh, meat grinder uh, in through a small incision and grinding up an enlarged piece of tissue and essentially sucking it out. So it's there's nothing technically elegant about this operation. It's, uh, it's basically a, a very crude um, um, mechanism that's essentially designed for ease of use for the, for the surgeon. Um, uh, it's a, I think patient safety in this particular case has been, has been almost completely ignored. Um, so when Ms. Chambers is asking, is morselation used for simple endometriosis? So um, uh, no, morselation is, is used to uh, extract enlarged tissues out of small incisions. Um, and in fact, it could cause endometriosis. That's one of the benign conditions that it could cause because, you know, in the, in the, in the process of uh, pulling out this enlarged uh, uterus, you know, bits and pieces spray all over the abdominal cavity. I, you know, I apologize. I probably should have included a link, and I think uh, I'll, I'll send one to Kevin to post. But what you'll see is uh, essentially a, a device that uh, grabs onto an enlarged tissue, grinds it up. In the process of grinding it up, all the bits and pieces of tissue and, and blood are uh, spraying all over the abdominal cavity. Um, and so, yes, endometriosis could actually be caused by morselation. So I don't think it's used necessarily to, um, um, to treat uh, endometriosis.